Lords, Cherishing Cat she, she here, and happy 9-11 everybody. She is how it's the 15th anniversary of it today. I thought I'd make a video proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that 9-11 was an inside job. And look, I know what you're thinking. She, she, there's no way 9-11 could be an inside job. All the big jobs are outsourced these days. Well, clearly you haven't been listening to the experts, like this guy who's performing scientifically sound experiments, proving it, like this one. Oh my god, the one that had no resistance under it falls at free fall speed. And this woman right here, who also has irrefutable proof for why the Twin Towers fell way too fast. I have a hypothetical demonstration. A collapse is clunkety clunk, clunkety clunk, clunkety clunk, floor by floor. Say that 110 times. Folks, do you know what that means? It should have taken over 10 minutes for the Twin Towers to fall. The clunkety clunk test proves it. I've done the calculations. Anyhow, today we're going to be listening to an interview with David Weiss. He's one of the world's leading flat earthers. He runs a website deep inside the rabbit hole, which uh, incidentally is not a rabbit corn site, in case you were uh, wondering. Anyhow, as you can see here, he believes that 9-11 was a satanic ritual planned decades in advance. A claim easily proven by the fact that something that sort of looks like it could be Satan's face was seen inside the smoke for uh, about one millionth of a second that day. Here's Satan's actual face for comparison. Yep, that's him. Anyhow, he's going to be talking today with this other guy about predictive programming at 9-11. And I guess I'll just let him explain what predictive programming is. There's so much predictive programming. You know, the way I look at it is, um, you know, people don't realize how easily the human mind is programmed. And uh, they plant all sorts of stuff in movies, commercials, advertisements, and you don't even realize these things. They go into your subconscious. So when something happens, your brain puts them together and creates a belief. Some people think that's crazy, but that's what's going on. Yeah, I can see how on the surface, the Simpsons placing allusions to 9-11 years in advance might sound a little crazy, but then when you realize that Sideshow Bob's hair is right there in the collapse of the South Tower, this guy starts to make a little more sense. I want to play something. I don't know if you've ever heard Macho Man Randy Savage and Hulk Hogan World Wrestling Federation thing that was done in 1989 regarding the World Trade Centers. You ever hear that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, some of you Shadowmites might remember I did feature this in a previous video. But please, brace your shouts. Because similar to this monkey having sex with a goat's face, once you see it, you won't be able to unsee it. We're going to have one whale of a main event right here. Twin Towers. Take it, Mean Gene. Gentlemen, is this the match you wanted all along, or are you going to continue your terrorist attacks? Three people working as one with one goal in mind. To defeat, or should I say demolish the Twin Towers? Ooh, yeah. Hulk, it's the law of man that's going to supercharge the mega powers and tear down the Twin Towers. Ooh. Tear down the Twin Towers. Ooh. Tear down the Twin Towers. And Hulk Hogan, that pain won't stop until the Twin Towers come crumbling down. <laughs> oh, yeah, right now, tonight. <laughs> okay, that's just crazy. Yeah, you bet that's crazy. And what's even crazier is that here, Macho Man Randy Savage asks us to slam into a Slim Jim. Slam into a Slim Jim! Much in the same way that an airplane slammed into the Twin Towers. And look at the devastation that ensues. Predictive programming is everywhere, people. The Twin Towers, you're gonna see the Twin Towers come crumbling down. Okay, that's just crazy talks about the towers coming down what what is your take on that they plant stuff like this you know the crumbling of the towers and and all sorts of stuff in movies it's commercials advertisements and you don't even realize these things they go into your subconscious so when something happens your brain picks all these little pieces of information doesn't even know what they are and puts them together and cr creates a belief okay do you shadow get it yet 
This guy holding a sign for less than five seconds on a random WWF telecast. A uh, plane flying into a church that sort of, but not really, looks a lot like the Twin Towers in the Rugrats movie. And Lindsay Lohan getting a fax with the dog saying 9-11 has created your belief that planes took down the Twin Towers. <laughs> it all makes sense. That's why Lindsay Lohan has almost died of alcohol poisoning so many times. They're obviously trying to kill her off because she knows too much. Now, let's take a closer look at some of these examples they give in this talk. Here's Terminator 2 Judgment Day, which, as it turns out, was warning us about 9-11 all along. However could we have missed that? Here's the Super Mario Brothers movie, and it makes sense that the Illuminati would want 9-11 imagery to be in this, because it's one of the few movies that shocked about as much as 9-11 did. Here's 1993's Godzilla, see the counter on the bottom, and OH MY GOD IT HIT 9-11 FOR A SPLIT SECOND, HOW COULD WE NOT SEE THIS? WHAT FOOLS ARE WE THAT WE JUST MISSED THAT OBVIOUS FORESHADOWING OF 9-11 THAT PASSED BY IN A NANOSECOND? WAKE UP SHEEPON, THIS WAS A CLEAR WARNING IF WE HAD JUST SEEN IT COMING, AND HOW COULD WE NOT SEE IT? WHAT THE fuck? And here's another scene from Godzilla. He's checking his watch, and oh my god, it's 8.55! Um, not really sure what the significance of 8.55 is, but uh, anyhow, here's Trading Places with Eddie Murphy, and there are the Twin Towers right there, and then look, it's a clock! Oh, it's 8.55 again! Still not sure what that has to do with 9-11, but there is a pattern emerging. Here is the underrated Gremlins 2, and look, those reporters' microphones right there, they spelled out 9-11. Now, the Illuminati must have called up director Joe Dante and said, Joe, it's the Illuminati. We're planning on taking down the Twin Towers in a controlled demolition about 11 years from now, and it would be really helpful if you throw in a sheet with a couple of reporters, get them to hold a couple of microphones next to each other so that it spells out 9-11. Uh, no, 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 don't bother calling attention to it at all. We, we want it to be something that nobody notices at all. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a new thing. We're calling it predictive programming. Also, the movie Lethal Weapon um, had unbelievable predictive programming in it. When the two police officers um, were going to, the, to someone's house, they get out of the car, the, the, the camera pans by a no parking sign, and it says 9-11 on it, 9 through 11. Yep, that is definitely predictive programming, people. It's predictive that you will probably get a ticket if you park there any time besides 9 to 11 a.m. And okay, you know, maybe there's no parking from 9 to 11. That's just a coincidence. Oh, oh, you see that, people? There's no coincidences. Okay, so when you see 9 11 written on faxes in Lindsay Lohan movies or titles that realistically would have a clearance of 9 feet 11 inches or a time code that just happens to hit 9 11 as any time code would, it's simply implausible to believe that it's just a matter of mere chance. It's far more sensible to believe that these measures were taken so that you could one day form the belief that planes took down the Twin Towers. You know, I'm thinking they probably didn't even need the planes to be there in the first place because placing road signs in the back of late 80s buddy cop movies is really all they needed. Okay, you know, maybe there's no parking from 9 to 11. That's just a coincidence. But as they walk into the house, there's an airplane, a seven, you know, a Boeing jet that flies and it looks like it's about to hit the chimney, but of course it's in the distance. And the second it's in line with the chimney, the entire house explodes. Folks, that's really all you need to know. Plane flies into a chimney and lethal weapon equals 9-11 is an inside job. I'm telling you, it all makes sense because as we all know, the Jews were responsible for 9-11. They own Hollywood, which is why Mel Gibson actually hates them so much. He feels guilty for the role he played in all of this. And if you notice, this rabbit, fucking this rabbit right here, has what it appears to be a yarmulke on a chain. Watch it again. You think that's a coincidence? That's not a coincidence. There are no coincidences. The Jew Luminati placed that Jew rabbit in this video 
to prepare you for what I'm saying right now. It's all finally starting to make sense. And I think we need to bring in the scheming little Jew baby. It's been a while since we've seen him, but we gotta bring him in for questioning because uh, I think he might be the key to unraveling this mystery further. What, what's he eating there? Is that an apple slice, a hunk of cheese, or maybe, just maybe a wad of nano thermite that was used to bring down the Twin Towers in a controlled demolition? Of course that's what he's eating. And wrap your head around this. Rabbit? Rabbi? There's no coincidences! And there was no reason for that airplane to be in there. It was purposely put in there. Yeah, and folks, this is pre-CGI, which means they must have perfectly coordinated that fucking jumbo jet to fly right into that chimney at the very moment the house blew up. Which, you know, might sound complex, but they're good at this sort of thing. Cause remember, they were able to make it look like a plane was responsible for the twin towers exploding like this. And the only reason you believe that horse crap is because Macho Man Randy Savage and Hulk Hogan made you think that was possible in the first place. Hulk Hogan is in Gremlins too, by the way. There are no coincidences! It couldn't just be that they were shooting next to an airport, which would make sense because a few seconds later there's a, another fucking plane in the background. No, of course not. As they say in this presentation, they put that second plane in after the explosion to reinforce it. Once again, there's no coincidences. They painted this onto a tunnel purposely to prepare you for 9-11. It's a miracle Ninja Lohan hasn't been killed yet by the Jew World Order. This kid is eating nanothermite, and that's why every time Macho Man Randy Savage slams into a Slim Jim, devastation occurs. So, look, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. You don't have to, but if you don't, you will burn in hell. Become my patron on Patreon, and buy my t-shirts. Links down below in the Christ box, cause cash rules everything around, but cream got the money, dollar dollar bill, y'all. And until next time, remember... Super duper special thanks to the Legion of Extraordinary Shadowmites, without whose generous support this freaking crap just would not be possible. Just wouldn't happen. Uh, you too can become a member of the Extraordinary Shadowmites by going to my freaking Patreon. Links down below in the Christ box. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. You don't have to, but if you don't, you'll totally burn in hell. Forever!